Good morning, everyone, and welcome to Sunday Morning Coffee with Lisa. I'm spiritual coach Lisa Hopp. This is the episode for Sunday, October 6th, 2019. For those of you on the ball, you're not going crazy. It is Saturday, October 5th, but I will be out of town tomorrow morning, and I really didn't want to miss the week, so I'm recording a little bit early, so I guess it's Saturday brunch (laughs) instead of Sunday coffee. I'm just getting out of town, need a little respite, a little bit burned out out so gone for a good rest and dinner out of town and all of that so looking forward to it the end of this work day today and I hope all of you are well happy weekend and we're really heading into fall now here on the east coast and it's just beautiful I think it's supposed to rain tomorrow but it's just beautiful so hope is all all is well in your world so here's the topic for today um and by the way for those of you new to me thank you so much for listening for those of you coming back i appreciate you more than you know please uh check out my website lisahop.com that's l-e-s-a-h-o-p-p.com um, as I announced on my business Facebook page, which is under Spiritual Coach Lisa Hop, please go over there and follow me. Like it. Thank you. Um, as I announced there, I am putting all this, all these podcasts, all my meditations also onto my YouTube channel, which includes my channelings from the angels and other um people and beings and so um it's good because you can listen to them and people are telling me this you can listen to them over and over and over again and wow that's such a i'm so grateful i'm so grateful that people want to do that and that it is helping all of you i it's just um amazing i'm so honored and so humbled by the ability to be able to do that the choice to be able to do that uh thank you so much so this will be loaded on there as well it's under lisa hop if you can't find me just please email me at serenity harbor at verizon.net and i'll send you the link to the channel (laughs) thank you okay so on to this uh week's topic as i as you may know um I may have said this before, I think of the topic like last minute, and I was doing it this morning, what to say, what to say. And I do try to base it on current events or on personal events. Um, And I came up with this one about, oh, 30 minutes ago. So here we go. (laughs) Um, I want to talk about projection and I don't know how exactly I want to title it. I'll figure out the title when I set up the recording, but all of us have been through projection and I'm going to tell a small little story that I, um, for those of you in my infinite possibilities class currently, you've heard this story, but, and it's a small story, but it is a perfect example of my personal projection this week. So, I have an office and the office has a private parking lot. Um, And there have uh, been a local group of, the the group is growing, but there have been a local group of preteens and teenagers that um, have decided to uh, be on our private uh, spot, our private parking lot. And um, I have always been torn about this because I want them outside. I want them to be happy. I want them to be successful. At the same time, they're not respectful. They don't allow people to park there comfortably. They don't even allow you to walk in. They like they don't move for you. So um, here and there, we've had to do something about it. And it was one of those weeks again where we had to do something about it. And it's just... Oh, it's you just don't want to be in that position. But at the same time, you you have a business to run. You know, we all are in a building with various businesses, and you need to be in a comfortable space. And so, um, but what happened over this time is that I would build up these feelings for these this group of, I guess, for a better word, youngsters. And uh, but though at least one or more older. Um, and, um, 
because I I would hold it in. I wouldn't want to. I would say things every once in a while, like, please, you know, stay away from the cars or let people park and walk in. But they, they would not even acknowledge me. And so I was building up emotion and building up emotion and building up emotion about it and, and talking about it inside, but not really burying what I really wanted to feel and say about the situation. And yes, I suppose in the scheme of things in the world, it's smaller. That's why, you know, it's a perfect small little example. So this week again, the issue was rectified again, hopefully rectified forever. Um, But I built it up. So I happened to be walking out a client um, to the front door and here were two teenagers um, blocking the front door, sitting there um, and just blocking it. And I opened up the door for the client and I said, please back away from the door. Uh, We have to come in and out the door. The teen, um, one young lady just bolted, (laughs) but the other one stayed and kind of went, oh, um, and I said, yeah, it's a door. (laughs) So the, yeah, it's a door (laughs) was my projection. I was, I added that line, not because of her on a typical day, I would have said, excuse me, ladies, all light and fun and airy. But I was letting off the steam from the group of kids in the back on the two in the front. And it didn't go further than that, by the way. Um, She didn't move, by the way. (laughs) So I didn't terror. I didn't terrorize her. (laughs) But um, yeah, she didn't move. Um, Eventually she did leave, but not right away. Um, But I knew it immediately. I even said something to the class that night. I said, I projected today. Um, And what you put out, you get back. So I always try to watch about what I put out. But I also am bringing this up to you because all of you listening to me have been on the opposite end of someone projecting onto you. Probably most of the time when you are in a situation that erupts, it's probably not what you've done. Yes, sometimes it is about us. And, and here's how you know, you would know that. Um, if a person, well, let me say it to you this way, how you would know it's a projection is it comes out of nowhere and the person is overly upset, um, or just cranky. And you don't know where it's come from. That's probably a projection. But if they go on and list all the things they've been wanting to say to you, then it's about you. Um, They're not just taking something out on you. That's happened to them about something else or someone else or how they're feeling. If it's about you, it's about you. So if it's about you, and you don't agree with it, or you feel that they should accept you, which they should, by the way, we should all accept others for who they are and where they are. It doesn't mean that we have to be in certain relationships with them or even keep them in our lives, but it is very important that we always accept a person for who they are and where they are and find peace within it. So if you are listening to their words and you don't necessarily agree or you are in a place that you want them to just accept you the proper thing to say is I'm sorry you feel that way and then try to communicate about it a little bit more to come to a mutual understanding if you feel you have wronged them and they're right own it Just own it and say, I'm sorry. When I do the slightest thing wrong, if I even have a thought I might have done something wrong, I'm going to apologize. I said in the class this week that I thought one of my blocks in life is that I often feel I'm right. And honestly, when I take an opinion on something, I, I do 
feel and know I'm right in that moment. <laughs> but that I always, what my I feel my block is, is that I have to make sure that that knowingness um, is not going to cause me to have pride get in the way or a lack of understanding or a lack of empathy or a lack of compassion. I have to make sure that I know it, but it's, it, you know, it doesn't lend itself to anything uh, further in a negative way. Um, and I believe it was something that um, the great spiritual teacher Wayne Dyer said that, uh, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing here that, and, and you guys probably, you know, understand what I'm trying to say and probably have it straight on but um, it's something to the effect of um, even when you know you're right you can still have peace you know it it, is you you can know when to step back you can step away you know and sometimes it's not even worth it to say you're right you know just just to keep quiet and let the peace form. And so, and yes, that was a big paraphrasing. (laughs) Um, And so, I, as I said, uh, apology is important, but apology should never be apologizing for what you're not sorry for or apologizing just because you're someone who apologizes all the time. In my office, I tend to lecture my clients quite a bit, especially the female clients who apologize for everything. If I go over time with them, they apologize. I'm the one running the appointment. If something's going on with me, they apologize in other ways. Um, if, um, if if they do the slightest infraction, they're apologizing. I'm like, no, you don't have to apologize for everything. Apologize when only you have made an error and the other person deserves that apology. And here's another thing. Here's another thing, my soul tribe here. Learn to accept the apology that you're never going to get because the greatest offenders among us are not going to apologize. So it's very important to forgive them and to forgive yourself. We forgive ourselves for what we allow to happen to us, for putting ourselves in a position And for any feelings of grudges or holding on to anything that we may have. So forgiveness is a two-way street. It's for the other person. It's also for you. And when you forgive another person, I think you might know this about me by now, but worth repeating, when you forgive the other person, it doesn't mean that you have to accept what they've done, that you have to let it go. Yeah, you should let it go within you so that you have health and happiness and peace and joy. But forgiving them doesn't mean absolving them. You don't have to absolve them. Know who your bubble should be. Know who is best to have around you. Keep it positive. Keep those around you that only support you, that are good for you, that lift you up, that are healthy. That's so important. It's probably the most important thing of all. Okay. So when you're in this place and someone has gone off, always try again not to, well, the second thing, I suppose, or the second way to handle it besides knowing if the apology is appropriate And it is in some way. The second thing is to also step back from it as quickly as possible. Don't add the fuel to the fire. If you're right, and if they're they're projecting on you, you're right. um, You don't have to win the argument. You don't have to get that validation step back get off get away if it's online get off if it's in public walk away if it's on the phone do a short goodbye and hang up 
time heals most wounds. It can heal all wounds unless it involves the will of somebody else. And then you can't make them cooperate in the healing. But if you can step back and understand that the situation that you were in with them, especially if it has nothing to do with you, when you step back, you give it a chance to heal. You give it a chance to absolve itself. Cool minds will win. Reflection will win. Time heals all wounds, even if it is not a physical healing in a relationship that you have with someone. It will heal you inside, mentally, emotionally, spiritually. I have forgiven people in my life, but still cut them out of my life because it was for the best. Live with a good heart. Live with understanding. Live with empathy. Live with compassion. Live with tolerance. Live with love. You can love somebody else, but know what is the best thing to do. I remember this scene, and I speak about it quite often in my off microphone life. Um, <laughs> there is a mini, the mini series Jesus of Nazareth, which um, came out in 1977. Robert Powell was Jesus, uh, the Renaissance version of Jesus with beautiful blue eyes, and uh, he. Um, the poor actor, um, not, I mean, <laughs> if you're going to be typecast, um, I guess it could be worse, but, um, he really was typecast after that role because he did such a wonderful, uh, portrayal of Jesus. And there was a scene in this particular mini series where, uh, Peter, the apostle, um, he has just met him. He has not even met him. He's coming to shore, he's a fisherman, and he's going off. And he's going off about the lack of the take for the day. He's, he's just a cranky guy. And he turns, He pro- oh my goodness, he projects onto Jesus his rotten day. <laughs> Heaven tells me what to talk about, and here we go. They, 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 I found one. I found another great one. And so he's projecting onto Jesus his day. And, and just challenging him. And this wonderful being is just standing there with this beautiful smile, just letting Peter hammer him. And he's just standing there, just smiling, but not smiling in a sarcastic, I'm better than you kind of way, arrogant way. Just complete love, complete adoration, admiration. So much so that Peter shut up. He didn't know how to handle that. It drove him a little crazy. That's the key. When someone's coming at you, back up or just stand there calmly. And if you can do it in a very humble, genuine way, Be authentic. Even give them warmth and a smile and tenderness. It will heal the situation and most likely instantaneously. And it will also gain you, I'm being told to say, a tremendous amount of respect. Every day, We are all in a position for someone to take out their bad day on us. There was a moment. I I have moments that are cranky and they're always when I'm tired. And the person knows that. It's like, oh, she's tired in this moment. That's why she's saying no the way she's saying it. But then I snap myself right out of it because I, I know what's happening in that moment. And, and I know once again, I'm projecting. There was a particular moment a long time ago where I wasn't feeling well at all. I was very unwell. I was in a lot of pain. And I happened to have a situation with an appliance. And I was a terror. (laughs) I was a terror because I was suffering so much. And 
I, w- I was being wronged about the appliance, but I was a little bit more of a fighter about it because I was suffering so much, but I got my way, <laughs> but that is not the way I should have done it. And so even when you're right, it doesn't mean that you should project. <laughs> um, always try to live in a way where you're putting out your best self because there's a natural law. And what you put out, you get back. And you may not see it right away, though it's happening more instant now, nowadays because of the alignment of the energies of our world. But um, it will come back. It may come back in instantly or three days or a year later, but it'll come back. Don't live in fear of it. Just try to put out the best of what you would like to imagine coming back at you. It's worth the effort to do that because it'll really make sure that you're living your best possible life. Thank you so much for joining me for my podcast for Sunday, October 6th. wanted to remind you that I wrote a book three years ago. It's going on actually four years ago. And it is called Take These Steps Now to Change Your Life with now is in all caps because I was really as serious. And it ends with exclamation point and it is available on Amazon.com and is $7.95. And it gives you the steps towards using the natural law of attraction or energy of karma to create deliberately the life that you would like to have. Please pick it up. You can also get it through my website at lisahop.com. And if you do it through there, I'm most likely going to autograph it. Um, I also have another book, Affirmations for Everyday Life, which is currently out of stock in my office, but it is also available on amazon.com for eight ninety five, dollars And um, you'll find it under author Lisa M. Hop. Um, it's both of these are what I like to call prosperity pamphlets. Um, they're little short reads are only like no more than 50 pages at the most. And they just give you the step by step to really turning things around. If you're in a place where you'd like to start deliberately creating, you'd like to start a new chapter that's more prosperous and happy and healthy. So please check that out. I know that on Amazon, they even, it's, it's, oh, by the way, it's on a Kindle, ver- Kindle version as well. So you can check out a page and see if you like it. But please do that. And also remember, find me on YouTube and also uh, check me out on my business Facebook page at Spiritual Coach Lisa Hop. And I also have a personal uh, Facebook page, but I honestly use that for personal reasons. So I will, may, uh, accept your friend request, but you're not going to get updates on my events on that page. So it is best to go to my business page, please. Um, which is spiritual coach Lisa Hop on Facebook and has a nice, so I have a cute little picture of me on there. So <laughs> you get to see what I look like guys. All right. So I'm going to get going because I have a respite to get to. <laughs> so I hope you have a wonderful weekend, a wonderful week. Look for my angel channeling, which I'll probably upload later or later on Sunday when I return. And I wish you all the best. And thank you again for all your support. It matters. It matters. You make my life great. And I appreciate you so much. Thank you again. And many blessings to all of you. Take care.